Okay, so here we are. We've got our Harbor Freight 10 by 18 mini wood lathe. I've been wanting to buy one of these lathes, frankly, uh, for quite some time uh, to replace my home. Not replace my homemade lathe, but, um, you know, in addition to, you know, when I need some, uh, I would say, more detailed work. I enjoyed using a homemade lathe for like the last six months. Uh, but decided to break down and uh, purchase a Harbor Freight 10 by 18 wood uh, mini lathe. Okay, uh, we received a coupon from, what prompted me was we received a coupon from Harbor Freight Tools uh, via uh, my cell phone uh, that they were offering uh, uh, 10 to 15 percent off of all items in the store to uh, Harbor Freight uh, uh, members. Okay, so we've been a member for many years, uh, and so we decided to go ahead and go down there. So this ended up costing us, with the discount, it was regularly $279. It ended up costing us, uh, with, uh, with the discount, uh, $245. Okay, so this is an excellent, excellent value at $245. Uh, the only thing we've done uh, since we purchased it, as far as the machine itself, is just to uh, put our, uh, our vintage 50s Craftsman Garage uh, decal on there, a sticker, and we removed the warning over here because we planned on we planned on putting some type of uh, some type of sticker over there as well. I'll probably end up uh, removing this sticker as well, and then putting something on there that's you know more of a vintage more of a vintage look, you know, that goes more with the shop. Uh, and that's pretty much about it. So. We've done three um, small projects. We did the um, the corkscrew project utilizing this lathe. Well, we also did a couple of handles. All right, so we haven't completed this handle as far as installing it on the uh, on the uh, tool yet. Uh, but we turned this on this lathe that came out really really nice. Okay, um, and then we also. Um, this one we did complete. So we turned this today, today on January 3rd, okay, uh, we turned this handle just using a scrap piece of uh, lumber, okay. This one never had a handle, one of our vintage files. We just cleaned it up a little bit and uh, we added a little um, brass collar, okay, a piece of half inch copper tubing. And uh, yeah, it came out really nice. So this is the type of... Uh, the type of projects you could do just you know literally right out of the gate with this with this unit and uh, I mean we're, we're talking about like you know under 20 minutes start to finish on this so it's really uh, you know you can see immediate results uh, really really high quality frankly uh, it, in my opinion for for 279 even I mean even at a higher uh, price point I think it would be a great value, uh, but at two seventy nine, it certainly is. But that at two forty five with the discount, um, yeah, absolutely ph phenomenal. Um, I did pick up the warranty on it. Um, not that I, I, I think it will uh, be an issue, uh, but I did pick up a two year uh, warranty on this. Uh, it was only thirty dollars, um, so I, I figured you know for thirty bucks, if anything goes wrong with the unit anything breaks it could be the smallest part it could be I, I mean literally it could be anything you could have a crack on the on the plastic plate switch okay so the these these are also you know made out of polymer so I mean these these may break okay so if anything breaks on this unit like I said it doesn't matter what it is it could be one of the feet maybe I you know maybe maybe I drop it okay um, yeah I'm gonna get a brand new one Okay, uh, for, for two years of bring in the old unit and trade it in for a brand new unit. You know, Harbor Freight Tools has an unconditional uh, guarantee for replacement if you have the warranty. So you definitely, uh, I, I, you know, in my opinion, probably want to pick up the warranty if you're new at, uh, especially, especially if you're new at, uh, you know, um, uh, you're just getting into this hobby, you know. Uh, because maybe maybe we'll make some type of an error, you know. So that's that's up to you. I think it's a good value. All right, so let's get into the uh, the meat of it here. Okay, um, uh, starting with uh, you, you know the lathe when you when you take it out of the box, it, it comes completely 
uh, set up already. Okay. Um, yeah, that's that's one of the things I really like about it. I mean, you literally take it out of the box, you put it on your bench, you level it. Okay, make sure it's nice and level. Okay, in both directions. You want to make sure it's level in both directions. Which so the vice came with uh, wrenches. Okay, Allen wrenches uh, for the various uh, you know bolts and whatnot. Okay, so. Uh, the first thing I did was, and I always do it with uh, items right out of the box, is I check to make sure everything is, is torqued down properly. Okay, so you go around, make sure everything is torqued, okay. And uh, frankly, um, almost all of the bolts were loose. Uh, you know, they weren't loose where they were. They were out, you know, but they were loose where they weren't, weren't torqued down. I was able to go almost a full rotation on each one of the... Uh, the head, uh, the head bolts, okay, um, and and frankly, all the rest of the bolts were also loose. So I went around the entire machine and um, tightened up all the bolts. All right. Uh, the one issue that I did have, which was not a big deal, was this Allen key, this this set screw for the wheel was missing. Okay, it wasn't here. Not a big deal. I'm sure if I went back to the store, they would have just handed me one. Um, uh, but frankly, I have a box of these uh, or a kit with all different sizes. So I just went ahead and just uh, put one in there myself. Okay, so that was the actual only issue straight out of the box. Not a big deal, though, like I said. Uh, so, that you know, tighten that down. All right, so uh, at... Uh, you know, after checking everything, tightening everything down, frankly, the the, the, the machine was ready to go. And uh, I was I was turning my first project uh, within 10 minutes of taking it out of the box. A couple of things I just want to point out um, that, you know, function well, but um, do need a redesign of the locks, the handle locks for the tool rest, okay? Uh, they function fine but they intersect um, you know the, the other locks okay the lock on the uh, on the tool rest uh, they intersect and that's that's a bit annoying um, I think that this handle could be shorter um, and or uh, if not shorter uh, the pitch or the angle uh, could be um, such that you know, it would be, you wouldn't get as much leverage in a sense, but I don't think you really need it. If you had a, if you had an angle that came out like this, instead of like a 20 degree angle, you could have like a 45 degree angle, maybe not even that much because it just, it just hits I and mean, get away with like a 35 degree angle. So that would be, that would be something that, uh, that I would suggest they, they, uh, they look into. Uh, but as far as functionality, it functions perfectly. It just locks right up, you know? Um, and and to, to basically to get these out of the way also um they do they are spring loaded so you could if you don't like where this is it's going to be in the way you could just pull out on it and just move it into a position that that you know you want it move it into whatever position you want so looking at the uh, lock on the tail axis okay it's it, you have the same situation okay so functions perfectly um locks it up nice um, the only issue it does intersect again with the tailstock lock. Okay, so uh, that's a little, little annoying. Uh, that was something that they could have very easily uh, resolved, and and probably will at some point in time. Not a huge deal. It's a little. It's just really more of an annoyance because it's something that could have been resolved very easily. Okay, so but the locks themselves. You know the tail, tail top, the tail stock lock. You know all the locks; they function perfectly. Okay, so you know, not an issue whatsoever. Nice and tight. They they snug up really well, with not a lot of pressure. As a matter of fact, um, you know. So let's just move the tail stock back. We'll move the tool rest around. Comes with a six inch tool rest. You know, which is a good start. You could do, you know, all your small projects. No problem. This is 5-inch. 
You could do your small projects like handles, pens, and, you know, stuff like that, small bowls. You could do cups, you know, whatever, with, with, the, with the factory, you know, with the, the tailstock that's, uh, not tailstock, the uh, tool rest that's included, okay? Um, uh, at some point in time, I'm going to just pick up a, uh, a couple more. I'll probably pick up a 12 or maybe uh, a 10 and, well, maybe pro I'll probably pick up a 10 and maybe uh, an 18, because you do have with this locked out right there. That's that's maxed out. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, so that's that's 18 inches. Okay, so we'll pick up a uh, tool rest. That's you know I'd like to get one that's full length. You know, like an 18 inch tool rest. We'll slide that tailstock back in. Locks up nice and tight, and also not only tight but also it's aligned quite nicely yeah, that that's the next thing I'm going to uh, uh, show you I'm just gonna pan in for that all right so panning in on that you can see when you bring the tailstock into the head you could see that those the spur center and the live center on the tailstock they, they align like they, they align very well okay so um, yeah, extremely happy with that. Is it is also included with, uh, with the package as a tool, okay? It's like a push rod, okay? So you could easily change out the, um, the accessories, okay? So if you wanted to put a different, uh, life center on there, or maybe you want to put a drill chuck on there, very easy. We just put that in, give it a tap pops right out here it goes and then you could insert different accessory now this did not come with the kit this is this is a, uh, a drill chuck that I had already okay uh, but yeah that goes right in there boom okay so you're ready to go so want to take that out put the life center back in just use the tool insert the rod and just give it a little tap we are going to Use our tool to pop out the spur. Okay, we're just going to tap that out. And then we are going to insert, not insert, but we're going to install the faceplate. Okay, it comes with a three inch faceplate. Okay, that just turns on. Okay, if you want to lock that in, you can very easily. Um, I would recommend just uh, using something like this punch. There's a uh, a hole here drilled in you just put that in there and you can use your large crescent wrench to tighten that up okay like so get this the right size put this in there yeah and just tighten that up that's it okay so looking at the on off switch okay very simple on, off. If you want to make this lathe safe, okay, so no one else can utilize it or accidentally turn it on, okay, there is a, a plug here that you can just simply remove, just like that. And now it disables the on-off switch, okay? So that's that's kind of a cool safety feature. Just snap it back in. Just clicks, and now you're back in action. That's it. Okay, so moving on to the tailstock. The uh, the tailstock has a hand wheel, which is uh, really nice. I like the fact that it's it, it has the uh, little handle, so you can very quickly turn it in and turn it out. Okay, very effective. And then, of course, you have your... Uh, I mentioned before you lock okay the center is a uh, cup center okay so and it does have a ball bearing built in so it's uh, yeah it's pretty nice it's pretty nice you know for out right out of the box um, you know especially at this price point 245 okay so the release lever on the tailstock very easy to operate okay you could you can just you know it's locked right now just move it up you can move 
tailstock back and forth and just lock it back in. It's nice and tight. The alignment on the bed is is fantastic. It really is. It's fantastic. There's very, very little play. Okay. Um, very, very little. And when she locks in, it locks in nice and nice and secure. Not gonna be an issue there at all. Okay, so let's touch on uh, the tool rest base and the tool rest itself. Okay. But the first thing I'm gonna do is just pop out the tool rest. That way I can show you the base. Okay, so here's the base. The base swivels, okay, into uh, any position. So you're doing bowls. You're going to come in from this from this angle here, head on. Um, you know, so it, it moves quite easily. Uh, you know, I can't say enough about the ease of the use. Uh, you know, your, your angles, you know, no problem at all. It seems to be well built. I mean, um, I don't see any, any uh, problems with this at all. Uh, the only issue I have, like I said before, is the tool rest lever. Okay, it's, uh, it's, it's, it, it, they should have made it with better material, I think. And then they should have also had the angle where it doesn't intersect. You can see it here more clearly. It intersects with the, uh, the base, uh, lock lever. Okay. Um, but not not a big deal. Again, at this price point, you really can't complain. And you know, as far as this intersection here, that's more of just an annoyance. Uh, functionality is not really a, is not affected. You know, it's just it's just uh, it's just a minor annoyance. Okay, so yeah. So let's put the tool rest back in at this point. All right, it just drops in. You can raise it, lower it, you know, whatever the, you know, depending on the uh, the piece that you're working on. Okay, it just locks right in, nice and solid. Okay. Let's just drop that down and uh, lock it back in. You, it's spring-loaded, the lever itself, so you can just pull out on that. Oh, let's just lock this in so it doesn't move. Pull out on that and then move the lever out of the way once, once you have your rest locked in. Okay, now you can, you can utilize uh, the, base, you know, the base lever lock, okay? And then you can put that where you need it. Okay, so let's just uh, let's loosen this up, put that square on. Lock that out, and if we're working on a piece, we could just lock that in at this point. And now we're solid. We're locked in solid, ready to go, ready to work. Okay, so let's talk about the bed itself. The bed is very square, very smooth. Um, it didn't come with a lot of uh, uh, packing grease or oil or cosmoline. There was just a very, very minute amount on there. So... Uh, yeah, that was that was that was really a nice surprise because I purchased other units um, from you know various vendors, and, and when they come shipped, it you're just a mess. They're coated in uh, in some type of preservative lubricant for shipping, I guess, from 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 overseas. And this one was not clean as a whistle. I mean, really, really was really happy about that. Okay, so uh, yeah. So as far as the bed though, like I said, it's nice and it's nice and true. I'm really, really happy with it. Everything moves on it quite nicely. Okay, so good. So we're gonna briefly touch on maintenance. Um, underneath the uh, headstock, you have a, an access plate. You just remove the top knob with the screw. Take that off, and then the lower one you just lift up on it. Okay, you remove that plate. Okay, so inside here, you've got your, you know, I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna pivot, I'm gonna pivot the lathe, and you can see your lower pulley there. Okay, so if you need to access that, that's the way you do it. Okay, so here's this cover. Same, same deal on this. You've got the upper screw knob. Remove that. Try not to lose your washer. And then you just lift up on the plate. And now you've got full access here. You could see. There's your pulley. Your upper pulley again with the five steps. Okay. And this is how you, you literally just remove this belt and you move it over to a different pulley to get a different speed out of it. It's as simple as that. It's amazing. You've got a variation in speeds. You can go anywhere from uh, 750, next step up is 1100, then you go to 1600, 
2200 and finally 3200 revolutions per minute okay um yeah it, it works as simple as that it's it's a fantastic fantastic simple uh, configuration and uh uh no complaints on that at all these belts uh are available uh for very low cost i think they're about uh, 11 or 12 dollars if you do need to replace one over time um and very easy to change out Okay, so looking at the motor, which is tucked underneath, uh, the 10 by 18 mini wood lathe comes with a 110 volt, 60 hertz, 3.6 amp uh, motor. Okay, spindle speeds you can see <clears throat> that varies depending on uh, which pulley, like I previously mentioned, that you have it set up on. The motor speed itself uh, runs at 1700 RPM. Okay, so uh, I think from the factory. Uh, it came with uh, the belt set at 1600, uh, so almost a one for one on that. Uh, down here, you can see I actually started doing this some time ago because it's very easy to lose receipts. I thought this was a, a good idea. I taped the receipt uh, on, the, uh, on the motor, okay? I mean, you could tape it anywhere underneath. That seemed like a good location, taped it on a motor. So if I do have an issue where a return is necessary, um, I have the uh, the receipt right there. Okay, it doesn't get lost. All right, so maybe that maybe that was a helpful tip for you. Okay, let's so let's talk about the feet. Okay, comes with like uh, the feet are made out of like a urethane. Okay, they are adjustable. So, which is very important, if you do not have a level surface with your, when utilizing your lathe, when working with your lathe, uh, you're going to have a problem. You know, uh, you're going to, you're going to, uh, you're going to have a problem. So, you want to make sure that the first thing you do, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, is uh, make sure that your, your, your bed is 100% level, front to back, and side to side. So, your adjustable feet. It's very easy to do. They just turn in or turn out, raises it or lowers. If you are planning on changing out your belt or adjusting your belt in any way, uh, you need to know that this is the belt tensioner lever. Okay, so uh, you'll utilize your Allen key, one of the Allen keys that this came with. Put that in there. You'll drop it down, you know, loosen it. You move your uh, your motor down to release the tension on the belt. Remove the belt, replace it. You may need to tighten this uh, ever uh, you know every once in a while uh, as the belt becomes worn. You may need to uh, make an adjustment because uh, if you notice, in other words, if you notice your um, if you notice your workpiece getting uh, getting stalled very easily uh more than likely uh, the cause is uh the, the the belt is worn you need to adjust it and possibly replace it yeah. so i'm gonna actually give you a demonstration of uh the adjustment okay because from the factory i wanted to mention from the factory the belt was loose okay um so uh, it didn't have the proper tension and my workpiece was stalling very easily okay so to make that adjustment, very simple. Get your Allen key, insert it into the center of the bolt, turn down on that, that'll loosen it. Now your lever goes up or down. Okay, up is looser on the belt, down is tighter on the belt. All right, so you want to make sure you have your side cover off. Okay, so you can check the belt tension. It's, this belt is very similar to the belt you might be familiar uh, if you're into cars or you've been under the hood of a car. Uh, primarily, well, the older cars, a lot of them had uh, like fan belts and, and belts that ran the pulleys for accessories like air conditioning, power steering, so on and so forth, the alternator. All right, so you want to get a tension on that belt uh, that's similar, okay? You don't want it too tight. You don't want it too loose. It's too loose, your workpiece is going to stall. If it's too tight, 
you will wear out your bearing and your headstock and uh, and also wear out the belt um, you know before you know wear out your belt faster than it should wear out okay so after you've got that where you want it we just uh, tighten it up in a clockwise rotation and then reinstall your side plate okay so now that we have our belt adjusted um, we're gonna just uh, turn on the the, uh, the head uh, the turn on the, uh, the machine okay so here we go we're gonna turn that on in my opinion it's very quiet noise and the resonance the decibels um, are very manageable um, I am not concerned with it at all. I mean, if you want to wear a set of earplugs, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea at all. But, uh, yeah, it doesn't bother me at all. I'm going to just shut that off. At this point, we're going to put a workpiece in there and to show you the actual operation of the lathe. Okay, so before we start, because you will have a certain amount of uh, debris uh, flying around, we don't want to mess up our workbench because we have our, our trains uh, running in the background there. Uh, we had installed a shade that we could just pull down behind the lathe. To, uh, to keep uh, the uh, debris, the wood debris, out of the rest of the, uh, the area. Okay, so it works really, really well. Okay, and then we, when, we clean, do, when we clean up, we only have to vacuum a small area uh, in front of the, uh, the screen that we have installed. looks good there. All right, we're ready to go.
that's all. I just wanted to point out these holes are not from the lathe. The holes, this was just, uh, like I said, this was a very old wood. Um, and so these are, these are nail holes from, uh, you know, it's 120 year old, uh, reclaimed wood. So, but, uh, yeah, I figured I'd use it for scrap little projects like this. And otherwise, uh, it came so, out really well. Um, you know, you're looking at, you know, something that's, uh, four and a half inches long. So in wrapping this up, I, uh, highly recommend the 10 by 18 central, uh, machinery. Uh, lathe, okay, mini lathe uh, from Harbor Freight Tool. It's uh, it's an excellent value, especially uh, in this case where I got it for two forty five net. And uh, but even at a higher price point, I feel it's a great value. Um, I got the warranty for two years for an extra thirty dollars, uh, so I'm guaranteed to have a new unit basically within the next twenty four months. So if I have any problems, I can get a brand new unit. Um, yeah, other than that, that's about it. Um, if you have any questions, please drop a, a comment. And if you like this video, I would appreciate you uh, hit the like. And if you want to share it, share it. And, um, uh, also if you would like to see future videos, uh, you can subscribe to the channel and also hit the notification button. So, uh, you'll make sure, uh, you don't miss any of our, uh, future uh, reviews and uh, restoration uh, videos.